Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg, and in this video, the first in a series, we're going to embark on a journey exploring the Monport Onyx 55 watt CO2 laser. Welcome back. I can't wait to open this crate and get it up on the table behind me. Before I do that though, I do wanna share some of the dimensions of the crates because I do know a lot of people have questions about what is it going to take to get this machine through a doorway into their project area. I also took a look at the weight, not only the weight of the machine, but also the crating material. And when I add both of those together, I get about 60 kilograms, actually a little bit north of that. And when I do the conversion over to pounds, this entire setup here crated is going to be over 130 pounds. So it is good to find some help when moving the crate and when I'm ready to move the machine out of the crate onto the table, we're gonna see I'm going to employ a little bit of help for that. With that covered, let's check out some of the measurements of the crate. The total width of this crate is going to be about 46 inches. The width, and this is going to be the easiest way to carry this through a doorway, is 27 and a half inches. So I'm going to call that 28 inches. And the overall height of the crate is going to be a little bit north of 17. So we'll call that 18 inches. This top cover is conveniently held in place. The front and back is held secure with three metal tabs. Both sides of the crate have two on the sides. There's a couple basic tools that I would recommend when removing this top cover, starting out with a pair of gloves when you're actually doing the final step in removing the cover because this outer edge here is metal. And while it is deburred on it, I'd be concerned if another shipping crate next to this one brushed up against here and created a sharp edge on this sheet metal. To open the tabs, That'll be done easily with a small screwdriver. It's also really nice and convenient to have a pair of standard pliers. And if some tapping is involved, it's always nice to have a hammer. I'll show you what opening one or two of these tabs looks like, and then you'll get the general idea of what it'll take to get the top cover off. Each tab here has a little eyelet in the middle, and that is for a screwdriver to be inserted and it starts to open that up. Now this is where a pliers comes in and we can continue bending that up. Or if you like to hit things with hammers, that also works pretty well too. If you missed that the first time around, here's a close up of that tab. Just insert a screwdriver, start bending that tab back. And I like to use a hammer and tap that nice and straight. What I'm looking for when I'm bending these tabs up, I want them perfectly vertical. That way it has the best chance of releasing the cover from the bottom portion of the crate. Now it's just a matter of going around the rest of the cover, bending all those tabs up. It's been about a minute or two later. It really doesn't take too much time to bend all these tabs up. I can take my tools and set these off to the side. And this is the step where I definitely want to have some gloves on. And now it's just time to wiggle this cover. And once you have one corner up, the rest of this comes off very easily. With the cover off, I'm already loving what I'm seeing, and that is this black packaging foam. Everything I've ever had shipped to the studio that was packaged with this black foam has had zero shipping damage. When I lift this foam up, we're greeted by the first component here, and that is the included honeycomb with the Onyx 55 watt laser. Move that off to the side. And here it is, it's the machine, it's the first look that I have on it. And I really do love the black color scheme that they have on here. And right on top, right on cue, 
is the user manual for the machine. I'm also really drawn to these two orange straps that I think is going to be for the buddy system to lift this machine out of the crate and up onto the table here. Rather than pull this machine out and dragging all this foam with it, because I think there might be some parts tucked into this outside foam, I'm gonna remove all the foam off to the side and I think it's gonna make it a lot easier to lift the machine out of the crate. Oh, this one feels a little bit heavier and it does look like it's got a cover piece. And here is the roller attachment. The Onyx 55 that I have comes with a rotary attachment. And in an upcoming video, we're gonna take a look at what we need to do to get this set up and calibrated in the software. I'm now ready to go employ some help and lift this machine up on my table. Having the help of an extra person to move either the crate or the machine is definitely the way to move this. Having the orange lift straps really was a huge benefit in removing this from the crate I'm going to remove the straps, the rest of the protective wrapping around the machine, and then we can dive inside and check out the rest of the parts included with the machine. Those parts are shipped actually inside the enclosure. Wow, check this out. This is a beautiful glass top across the machine. From the pictures on the website, I thought this was like plastic and then just the cover was glass, but the entire top is this nice black with, of course, that onyx black with some of the polka dots and the Monport emblem in the back here. Let me grab the mini camera and we'll do a quick walk around. Across the front here, we'll see this is an all metal frame all the way around. There's a recessed e-stop button. When we move to the top here, here's that beautiful glass top that we were talking about before. Absolutely stunning to see this in person. When we move around the side here, we've got a nice clean side. And when we move to the back side here, we'll see that there's some more controls here, power input, the exhaust fan, and here's all the communication ports we have for the camera cable, the USB, and there is an ethernet port. And finishing up on the side here looks the same as the opposite side, a nice clean layout. The cover is held with uh, some friction hinges on it so you can leave it at just about any angle and it will stay there. Here's everything neatly organized, packed into the workbed area of the machine. Here's the, the exhaust fan on here. It's good to see this because we do want to exhaust all the fumes out of the work area. There's some different ductwork here, a power cable down here, some accessories, and we'll get this all removed and we'll check it out in more detail. Here's the huge inline duct fan that's going to be exhausting all of the fumes that we create inside of the laser work area. And next up is all of the ductwork that is included with the adapter and most importantly, the hose clamps. We already saw a number of the cables that I pulled out, including the power cable, ethernet cable, and USB cables. Inside the accessory box here, I have everything laid out. There is a height gauge here a USB cable, some foam swabs for doing maintenance and cleaning on the laser focusing lens and the laser mirrors. There's also an entirely separate extra uh, lens. I'm assuming that there's already a lens installed on the machine. And here's our height gauge for setting the focus. A connection terminator, we'll find out later on or in a future video where that is used a marking pen, a small air fitting, a number of fuses, and hopefully we won't have to use any of these spare fuses. 
some nice Allen wrenches with, I always like the ones with the ball ends on them, which these have because it allows you to articulate the wrench around in case there's something right next to uh, what you're trying to adjust. This gives you more flexibility of turning that wrench. And lastly, here's a bunch of laser targets. And when I go through the manual, we'll find out what these are used for. And let's check out the workbed area of the laser machine. The first thing that I'm drawn to is the linear rails on the Y axes on both sides. And then it gets the same treatment on the X axes. And I really like these because they're extremely accurate, very long lasting. They require a minimal amount of maintenance to keep these in tip top shape. The other thing that I saw when I was looking back in this corner is here is the radiator for the cooling system that is built inside of the machine. And the other part of that cooling system, if I move this carriage forward here, well, you should be able to see it right back here. And here is the reservoir and the pump. And when I wiggled the machine, I could see the fluid moving. So my machine arrived with coolant already in the system. Since we're back in this area here, this is going to be the high voltage power supply for the laser tube. Normally I would expect to see the laser tube permanently affixed to the back of the frame, but this carriage that I'm moving back and forth by hand here, when we take a look at this end here, the laser tube is underneath this guard here. So that is correct that the laser tube does travel on the same frame as the laser head module here. And that's definitely going to really help this system out, keeping the mirrors in focus. This machine also includes a very nice package of project materials. These materials were located at the very bottom of the shipping crate underneath the machine. And those materials include five sheets of three millimeter bass plywood, five sheets of three millimeter cardboard. And I'm gonna to touch base on why they would include cardboard as a project material. And there's still one more material type, and that is, as you've guessed it, five sheets of three millimeter acrylic. I think it's great that Monport includes cardboard as a project material. And this might sound new, but if you're somebody that is completely brand new to laser machines, Cardboard and poster board is a great place to start when learning how to do engraving and how to do cutting through materials. It's a great way to learn the relationship of laser power and laser speed, whether you're engraving or cutting, and this is a great place to start. I'm going to set these off to the side because I'd like to finish up with showing how the honeycomb is inserted into the machine along with what it looks like with the rotary attachment inside of the machine. I'll get this cover open one more time. And I'm going to start by pulling this tray. This is the debris tray that catches all the cutoff trims from the machine. And we're gonna see that the bottom here looks quite a bit different now. There's a large hole cut out down here, and this is where the rotary unit will be placed. And we're gonna take a look at that in just a second. And here's the included honeycomb, and there's some tracks on both sides of the machine, and that's exactly where the honeycomb slips into, and it just slides into place. And I'll grab this catch tray again, and this gets installed back in. And here is what the machine looks like with the honeycomb fully installed. It's a nice even surface. This is aluminum and there are the plastic uh, T-pin clips that'll fit perfectly into here. And we'll take a look at that in a future video when we start doing projects on this machine. And the rotary unit now, it just places perfectly in there. I'm gonna slide it up against the edge here that should keep this perfectly square within the machine. I don't have the cable connected to the motor that would come out here. Uh, that cable terminates back in the corner. I'll gently move the laser uh, tube frame forward here. And I believe this is going to be the connection for the cable up to the rotary back right here. 
And then here is the switch to tell the machine to stop using the Y axis and to start using the rotary unit. When we're doing the fly through earlier here, I forgot to mention that there's two LED light strips to either side of the work area. And that's going to be very nice to keep this area very well lit when we're working on the projects. It's really neat to see up close all the thought that Monpour put into this machine, the layout of everything, and the modularity of switching out between the rotary unit and the conventional honeycomb. The Onyx 55 watt CO2 laser machine by Monport. I had a great time unboxing this machine, sharing with you all the components that are included, along with taking a close up look on the inside of the machine with all the neat features. I hope that you'll join me for the next video where I complete the setup on the machine by connecting power, the exhaust system, and finally connecting the machine up to Lightburn software. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, learn, create, and share.